very important example. We need to find the non-singular matrices P and Q such that P, A, Q is in normal form. And then we need to determine the rank of A where A is equal to this matrix. And then we need to determine the rank of A where A is given to be as this matrix. Before moving on to the solution, we need to read this remark first. Let A be any M by N matrix. Then we can find non-singular matrices P and Q of order M and N respectively such that P, A, Q is in its normal format. That is the matrix of this kind where this IR is a identity matrix of order R and these are the zero sub matrices. Right? So what we need to do is the matrix A is given to us how can I write this matrix A to be as? Just pre-multiply this matrix A with IM. That is the identity matrix of order M. And post-multiply this matrix with IN. That is the identity matrix of order N. Right? What we have to do is, we need to apply the row and column operations on this matrix A until it is reduced to its normal format. And when we apply the row operations, those row operations, the elementary row operations, must also be applied on this matrix, which is to the left side of A. And when we are going to apply the column operations, we need to also apply those operations to the matrix on the right hand side of A. So row operations apply to the left hand side of the matrix of A and column operations are applied to the right hand side of the matrix A. Right? This we have to do until this matrix A is reduced into its normal form. And at the end, we get two matrices with this A. This IM matrix reduced to the non-singular matrix P. And this IN matrix will be reduced into the non-singular matrix Q. And from here, we write that these are the two required matrices. So let's illustrate this with an example. So A matrix is given to us and we need to find the non-singular matrices P and Q, right? How can I write this matrix A? A can be written as just pre-multiply this matrix A with the identity matrix of order 3 as this A is a matrix of order 3 by 3, right? And post-multiplying this matrix A with the identity matrix of order 3. Is it fine, okay? All right, now writing this matrix A here, writing the identity matrix, again writing the matrix A, and writing the identity matrix to the right hand side of A. And now we are going to apply the row and column operations on this matrix. I'm having one over here. To be the leading entry for the first row, I need to get zero in place of one and three. For that, I'm going to apply the row operations first. To get 0 in place of 1, what I need to do is just multiply the row 1 with negative 1 and adding its elements to the row 2. To get 0 in place of 3, again I need to multiply the row 1 with negative 3 and adding its elements to the last row. So I am applying these two row operations together. So performing, changing the row 2, changing the row 2 by adding its elements to the row 1 but the row 1 should be first multiplied with negative 1 first operation and changing the row 3 by adding its elements to the row 1 but the row 1 should be first multiplied with negative 3 and because I'm applying the row operations same row operations are also to be applied on this matrix which is pre-multiplied with the matrix A you don't need to touch this matrix, right? This is A as it is. So applying the row operations on this matrix and on the left hand side of A matrix, right? Writing the first row as it is. Row 2 is changed into 0, negative 2, negative 2. And here it is changed into negative 1, 1, 0. And row 3rd is changed into... 0, negative 2, negative 2 and here it is negative 3, 0, 1. For the normal form of the matrix, 
I need to make now these to be as 0. And for that, I'm going to apply the column operation. To get 0 in place of 1, just multiply the column 1 with negative 1 and adding its elements to the second column. To get 0 in place of this 1, again I'm multiplying the column 1 with negative 1 and adding its elements to the third column. So now I'm going to apply the column operations which are also to be applied on the left hand side of the matrix A. So performing, I'm changing the column 2 by adding its elements to the column 1 but column 1 should be first multiplied with negative 1 and changing the column 3 by adding its elements to the column 1 but column 1 should be first multiplied with negative 1. So we get writing the first column as it is here also and column 2 is changed into on applying this operation we get 0, negative 2, negative 2 and here we get minus 1, 1, 0 and third column is changed into 0, negative 2, negative 2 and here it is changed into negative 1, 0, 1 and writing this matrix as it is. I hope you are getting the point. So I'm having this column to be 1, 0, 0 and this row to be 1, 0, 0 for the normal format. Now I need to get these two to be 0. So to get 0 in place of negative 2, I'm applying the row operation now. Multiplying the row 2 with negative 1 and adding its elements to the last row. So I'm changing the row 3 by adding its elements to the row 2. But row 2 should be first multiplied with negative 1. So that I can get 0 in place of negative 2. So we get... We need to change these two matrices, right? Writing the first and the second row as it is. And third row is changed into 0, 0, 0. And here it is changed into negative 2, negative 1, 1. And writing this remaining matrix as it is. To get 0 in place of negative 2, just multiply the third column with negative 1 and adding its elements to the column 2. Applying the same operation over here also. So changing the column third by adding its elements to the column second but column second should be first multiplied with negative one. So we get writing the first and second column as it is because we are going to change the column third and third column is changed into zero 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 and here it is changed into zero negative one one. Writing this matrix as it is. So performing I'm just multiplying the elements of the row 2 with minus 1 half. And we need to also apply the same operation over here also. For row operations, apply the operations on the pre-multiplied matrix. And for the column operations, apply operations also on the post-multiplied matrix. Writing the first and third row as it is. And second row is changed into 0, 1, 0. And here it is changed into 1 half, minus 1 half and 0. And writing the remaining matrix as it is. So we have noticed that this matrix is reduced into its normal format having the identity submatrix of order 2 and then the other 0 submatrices. Yes? So this A matrix, the given A matrix is reduced into its normal format now. So we stop the operations now and, and we are getting this to be our non-singular matrix P and this to be our non-singular matrix Q such that this format is equal to P A Q, right? Where the matrix P is this and the matrix Q is this one. So these are the two required matrices. Now to determine the rank of the matrix A. Since P and Q are non-singular, so therefore the rank of matrix A is equal to, yes, the rank of PAQ, right? And what is PAQ? We have got this to be as our normal format matrix. So rank A is equal to the rank of PAQ that is 
the identity submatrix of order 2 and others to be zero submatrices and because other are zero submatrices so this is equal to the rank of the identity matrix of order 2 so that is the number of non zero rows are 2 so the rank of identity submatrix of order 2 is 2 hence the rank of matrix a is 2 all right thank you stay blessed <laughs>